Hello YouTube, in this video we're going to be still staying on task on the Ford Flathead. Now we're going to be talking about how to set the spring pressure, um, also known as setting the spring height. And you want to know why you got to set the spring height? Spring height equals spring pressure. So uh, the cam manufacturer will want you to have a certain uh, spring pressure on that cam. Why does spring pressure matter? Uh, too little of spring pressure would cause valve float. And valve float, um, we, you know, we see it in the shop. You can generally see valve float in two different places. Uh, three different places. The seat um, and the valve, if you do not have enough spring pressure and the springs were weak, you'll notice they're hammered. Hammered, when you see it, the 45 is actually has an indention in it. And what happens is because there's not enough spring pressure, the valve does not close and stay closed. It actually does that every time, every time, every time, because it doesn't have enough spring pressure to keep the valve closed. When it hits, it bounces. So, as opposed to having the valve closed one time, it's hammering it, it's hammering it. All right, so we'll have premature wear on the valves and the seats. If you see premature on the wear on the valves and seats, it probably was from not enough spring pressure. Um, also, what would, it, would not enough spring pressure do? Have valve float. That's on the high end. So you can actually have uh, where, the, where the valves aren't sealing on the low end, but you can also, also have it on the high end. It may seat fine on the low end. It may be enough spring pressure to keep the valves closed, but high RPM, it's not gonna keep the valve closed. That's valve float. Whereas I did mention it was another place. There's the two, the valve and the seat. The third spot is the tip of the valve. When it sits there and floats, it'll actually hammer and put a weird star pattern on the top of the stem. So if you look at the stem and you see this weird pattern on the top, it's usually indication of valve float. All right, so now we know that uh, valve float can happen by not having enough spring pressure. So a manufacturer is gonna tell you that they want 110 pounds on that cam. That's just a number I'm using. It's actually a very uh, general number that fits a lot of different automotive hydraulic flat tappet cams. All right, that all being said, um, they're gonna tell you 110 pounds. And they used to tell you the spring part number and the install height. They don't no longer do that because everybody would go there get what they want and go buy somebody else's spring. So now the manufacturer is just gonna give you their part number for their spring and they're not gonna give you any specs. You're gonna to have to call the tech line and go, you know what, I've ordered your comp, crane, ISKI, cam. What do you want for spring pressure? And they're gonna give you two numbers, open and closed. Um, and what that means is closed, when the valve's closed, uh, static, when it's sitting there, just sitting there closed, what spring pressure do you want on the valve and open? What do you want when the valve is open? Those are the two numbers they're gonna give you. At that point, it's up to you to figure out uh, what spring is gonna fit your, your application. An example is if they tell me that they want a certain part number spring and they want 110 pounds. When you get that spring and you open up your sheet, it's gonna say 110 pounds at 1,800 at 1,700, at 1,900, at 1,850. It doesn't matter what number I'm using. They're gonna give you a pressure at a certain height. That's what I'm talking about, is what install height. So we check the spring on a spring tester. We also, a lot of times, if I know I want this certain spring, I can get springs from any manufacturer. Uh, we have a tons of springs. A lot of times I'll go get different heights, go to my spring tester, and I'll test a lot of springs. When I find a spring that fits what I need, open and closed, the engine doesn't know that it's an ISKI spring or it's a comp spring. It's the spring that came from a Nissan and I'm putting it on a Toyota. It's not gonna freak out on me. As long as I give it the right installed pressure, open and closed, we're good to go. Enough said, let's get out to the shop and I'm gonna show you on this flathead forward how I not only determine what my install height was, and then I take that over to the spring tester. I check the spring pressure. Then I also gonna shim up the spring to get it to the right install height. All right, all that being said, it's easier to show you in the shop than it is to talk about it here. So let's get out there and, and figure this stuff out. All right, in setting up the valve train, um, there's a lot of flathead stuff out there, a lot of regrinds, a lot of everybody making a lot of stuff for it. So how do you know what you're doing? You just have to improvise. Um, this particular customer has sent us his own reground cam. Um, 
It's a Potvin 3 8 cam. I like ISKI cams. It doesn't matter. That's not the, the point here, so I shouldn't have even said that. So, but I have no specs on it. We can go online with the Google machine and find out the specs of that cam. It's a 375 lift, 280 duration. Um, so, what I want to do, and I encourage you to do this, just go to ISKI site and download is keys cams or look there's plenty of info out there um and you need to find out roughly what you want well we generally run on our ISKI cams um we generally run about 85 pounds of spring pressure um if it's not a, a radical cam flathead forge actually run better with smaller cams than everybody wants to go put a big old big ass cam in it but that being said, that's not why you're here or there. Um, I'll even run a little bit less spring pressure. Um, we'll run 70 pounds. You can get by with a lot less spring pressure. And with no zinc and phosphorus and oils, um, overspring in a cam is not the thing we want to do. Plus, why do you want to give up horsepower? Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and go with the 85 pounds of spring pressure. I would have probably dropped the spring pressure down just a little bit. And that all being said, look at all our notes. Let's move this stuff aside. If it's going to be 85 pounds, um, then it's going to have to be set up at a two inch install height. Back here, we've already determined that it's awfully dark over there. It's lighting up. What if we do it at two inch, which is the goal that we're setting for? We're going for a two inch, right? So. We're gonna set our caliper to two inch. Come on over here. You don't necessarily need a spring tester, but what you could do is take your spring over to a machine shop and they will do this for you. It may charge you a little bit, but hey, you know, time is money. So I'm gonna set this up at two inch. We can set this up at two inch. This becomes a class now on how to use a spring tester um, without the spring in it. Because as you're pressing it down, the the height of the pad in the bottom because it's checking spring pressure it changes so we're going to go ahead and do this here what i like to do is set my my top up here and i go to two inch there it is right there two inch so at two inch we're running 75 80 85 pounds so we're running about 85 pounds at two inch what do we <laughs> not bad at all what does iski say right there 85 pounds at two inch so that's why we're going to set our install height at two inch so now you've seen um how i check the install height how we test our install height and then we're going to shim to get our two inch install height okay i don't know if you can see that i will try to do a better job on these keepers um, what it is this is the standard keeper does that help um, maybe it does or doesn't that's the standard keeper there's an offset keeper and there's another offset keeper you see how there are a different ones of plus and ones of minus so we have plus and minus 60s um in our keepers so what does that mean there's our standard keeper if we wanted to get it to go uh, tighter we know we needed to 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 be at two inch see the offset of that keeper that's lowering me down closer to where i need to be here's this keeper that is raising it away so if i'm too tight we can put a, an offset keeper and give us our height wise that way if i'm too long we can put an offset keeper and bring it down shorter we're going to use an offset keeper um, to bring it down shorter that will get us closer to where we need to be also excuse my arm we have shims that we're going to put in down at the bottom I let's see what we have with 160 and the valve back in and let's use these goal offset in down ways 
And let's see how much difference I've made here so far. Excuse all the movements and all that. In editing, I hope I didn't just mess everything all up. I hope it's still very explanatory. I got my line. I'm also going to do another trick already. Trickery dickery dock. So I can never finish anything. Because I always see things I could do. Um, clip. Goes in. In that groove on the guide. And there we are. Where are we at now? Let's mess with that for now. One step at a time before we get one step beyond. For those of you who know, know. And the ones that don't have to go look up one step beyond. All right. So also get my hands in here so that I don't interfere with y'all. What are we at now? Where are we at now? Where are we at now? We're like right about there. Okay, so we are at two zero sixty. Sixty thousands more would take me exactly where I want to be. Darn it! Oh gosh, to heck! And that's already with a sixty offset keeper. So we may need to add that sixty shim. I don't know. We're going to give it a try. All right. So we have a 60 thousandths offset keeper and two 60 shims on the bottom. 120 plus the, the 60 was as 180. Uh, All right, so we worked it and worked it and worked it. And what do we have now? Let's see if I can get you a little closer to what we're doing. All right, so we have worked it. Here it is using my tool right there. And we found out that's what it was. And that it was two inch and we've hit it right on the money and I'll show you what it took to get that to happen hmm. all right so there we are so for this to work out exactly perfect at two inch it took a 60 thousands offset keeper up here on this side here and then we have dual shims down here at the bottom and that's exactly at the two inch see you need it in the block you can't really do it without having it in the block like i said one of these days i like to find that jig that ford uses there's a little jig you slide it in there um that's neither here nor there where is it all right so we got that one set right there this is now going to go over right here that will stay there for life actually not for life until it goes in there and we're going to do every single one why why not why not do every single one um we're not going to do one and just give them all, all the same shims even though i've set all my heights and done everything i'm still going to go through the motions of doing every single one guide spring everything else now that i have one set pretty close why don't we start off with the same setup um that that one has in it and we'll start off with that basic setup and we'll work from there it worked for that one it's going to speed stuff up to start off with that same exact setup there i am there's my sixty thousands uh keepers make sure they are pulled up all the way if they're not fully seated you may get some false readings um and we're gonna do every single one okay. 
All right, what do we have here for this one? Wow. It happens to be the exact same. All righty. So that's what happens when you go ahead and take the time to cut all of your seats. So I'm going to go ahead and now is set all of these here with the same combination I have here and drop every single one and check one. But as you can tell, it moves a lot quicker um, when you have all your heights set. So My guys are nice and snug. Why? Because we want them that way. And this one is now set. And like I said, I have them all numbered anyway so this is also a it's going to go here in order what i'm going to do is i'm going to take the test springs off and we know we have two shims um that I can, that can all stay right there um i'll even leave that retainer right there Set of keepers, that will stay right there. That retainer will go there. And we'll work our way down. Going ahead and get another valve. What have we determined? That we're really liking um, the two shim idea on the bottom. Test spring. Where's my retainers? Oh, here they are. In the box. Why wouldn't they be? All right. I'm going to go back over here. Skew there. And that's we're going to be our one, two, three. And there's my line. That one goes in there. Number four. There's my line. And that one goes in there. So, all that being said, you don't need to watch me do every single one. You can if you like. I'm not running you away. Hey, look at that. Look at there. Look at there. I'll get you one of these. If you don't have one of these, don't stop what you're doing. There'll be a link at the bottom. Um, yeah, I'll go buy something. I like tools. I like tools. I don't have one. I get it. Okay. Clip. In place. And then I like to go ahead and bring it back up because they're nice and snug. That's not by coincidence. That's not by coinkadink. Coink okay, valve completely closed. Let's see what we have here. Oh, man. Well, what can I tell you? This isn't close. I wish I could get you down. Get down in here with me. Um this isn't just close it's right on the money it's can you see that better there i'm checking that right there and it sits right there i got just the slightest there's no tent i mean it's right there it's underneath the the, the shim it's on the shims and retainer wow can we move it a little bit? Let's see. See, I can use my thumb right here, or my finger, and I can enlarge it or shrink it or anything like that. And we're shooting for two inch. Can you see here? <laughs> what is it? Uh, it's two inch. It is two inch. I just did it at... Uh, we're two inch, two, zero, zero, five. They don't make a 5,000 shim. 
that's bad to the bone. This is a flathead forge. Um, that's awesome. That's awesome. We're liking the bejeebas out of fat. That's wild. That's just really nice. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. Um, yep. We got 207. We got like 207, 208. They don't make an 8,000 shim. Um, we're rocking and a rolling. Um, that's what happens when you <laughs> machine all your, your seats at the exact same height. Um, pretty much the same combination can go down the road. I'm already at four in and the exact combination works. I'm going to go ahead and take the time to do all of them. Um, but we're, we're really sorry for the shaking. I'm a shaking. I'm so excited. Um, Lewis, this is really, really, really coming out nice. And like I so said, I'm we're going to take the time to put this baby right here, right now, live. Okay, it's live for me. Y'all are watching. All right, so let's go over here. And what are we going to do is try to adjust. Get a little closer. I'm hoping. Forge are a little tough because um, everything is done underneath the intake manifold. So it makes it real, real tough even trying to show you, but... If you're watching this video, you've probably done a Ford before or you want to do one. And let's get to it. Okay. My guides are always already set for the for the bore. And also have them numbered. And I also have them indexed where they're going to rotate. We, you know, if you ask, I will tell. But if you don't, then let's just go on without asking and telling. If you have one of these, if you're not, I'll put a link at the two at the. If you have one of these, great. If not, you're gonna have to get you one. So swap meets are a good place to find these. You can also get them online. I'll put a link at the bottom. Um, the valve guide has um, a slot cut in it. Or if you've noticed the slot on the guide, that is there for this. That's not there just for prettiness. It is kind of pretty, but it pulls the guide down. And then now you can put your uh, clip in. Okay. I'm going to pull the next one out just so I can show you what I'm talking about. That slot right there, that's not for a seal. That is not for a seal. That slot right there. Look at that. Can you see that? So there's a tool. And that slot... See how you can reverse it? Got a long bar. You can reach inside now and we can pull the guide down. We can put the clip in place. That's the clip I'm talking about. That's the next groove on the, on the line there. See that next groove? So there's our first groove. That's for our tool, not for a seal. A lot of people think that's for a Vostem seal, um, but that's for the tool. The next slot down, that's for this clip right there. That's what holds it in place. This next groove that's up here, that's for the seal. All right. You may have already know this, and you're probably thinking, why are you going through all of this? Okay. We got an another one assembled. Look at that. <laughs> Index, numero seis, which is six. There we are. All right, so we have it installed. We set the keepers in there. Go ahead and measure this one. Repeat, repeat, and repeat. I'm gonna take my time and get a good measurement. I don't know if you can see that. What do you see there? We're right at two inches. Oh, 
there you go. Right at two inches, 1.99999, two inches, two inches, right there. Can you see that? I don't know. That's the measurement. Y'all are trusting me. So that's what happens. When you set your every valve at the same height, when we come in here and set every valve at the same height, which is gauge when we do the valve job, and it seems that this cam grinder, this is a reground cam, has hit the base circle right on the money. Because we have not had to shim anything different on this side. I still didn't just take it for granted. A lot of people were just going to take measure one and set them all up. And most flathead forge are all over the place in heights. And they're, I know. It doesn't matter, it's a flathead forward, it's gonna run, blah, blah, blah. Look at there, I'm gonna take my test spring off. That's my assembly. We're going to the next one. Number eight, I have it marked. You can see how I've machined the top of the guide. We've talked about that, that's for the port airflow. We've talked about a nice performance valve that stem is cut down, ProFlow valve, with that cut right there. We just enhanced airflow without going crazy and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. We're crazy. All right. Shims, boom. We're going to use the same uh, start off setup. I'm even going to grab, and I'm even using the retainer for that hole. And that's going to stay in that hole. Um, if we're taking the time to set every piece up, why are we going to just throw everything in a box and then, or on the table? So, believe it or don't, all our setup, thanks Lewis for this beautiful setup there, and every one is now set. I'm not going to mix this stuff up. That guy, those shims, those retainers, every part here is for that hole. I know, it's it's production and it doesn't make any difference and blah, blah, blah. So what are we doing? We're setting it and forgetting it. So we have our keepers and I set, I'll make sure that they're up and seated in the retainer really well. Then we're coming over here, going through the motions, but repetition is what, I don't know what that is. I was gonna say something, didn't even know what, what I was gonna make up. When I was thinking about repetition, I got sidetracked. I was thinking of something else, so I lost my train of thought. Where is shop mom? Speaking of repetition. All right. Get a little distracted there. You might want to make you a special tool. It's the coat hanger. Sometimes it's nice to be able to reach in there. I got big hands, so reaching in there sometimes gets a little frustrating. So um, I'll use a little tool like that. Don't forget, don't be a tool. Use tools, don't be a tool.
so on and so forth. The tip of the day, you won't get another one today. So take this one with you. I'm just kidding. All right. So this one goes in there. We've already determined that goes in there. We've already lapped that valve. This valve has been lapped for that cylinder right there. Guide goes in. You all know what valve shims are? These are valve shims. They look like little rings. They come in different thicknesses. This is a 60, they come in 30s. Um, they come in 15s. In a different color, that's a 31. There, the 15s will be black. It's even thinner. Um, this was commonly used. This is a VSI. That's the brand name. There's a bunch of generic ones on there. What does the VSI valve spring shim have that's because you're wondering what's the difference of, of getting a VSI one, um, flip the back of it up, and they have their patented. See those little slots? Those are patented to keep the spring cool. So they have little slots in there to dissipate the heat so it doesn't go up the spring. Isn't that pretty cool? A generic one is just going to be a piece of metal, a shim. Works okay if you're just using it as a shim, but isn't it nice to have that patented lines in there to keep the sprinkle? All right, that's a valve spring shim. Don't go stop what you're doing. If you need some, let me know. You can buy these through Iski. I think they're 40 bucks for a pack of 16. I'll sell you a pack of 16 for $39. I'm just joking, contact shop mom. Make you a deal. It's a lot better than buying the packs of 16 from Iski. I love Iski, but like here we're doing two per per guide. So if you bought a pack, you have to buy two packs. Now you're at $80. Um, that's neither here nor there. I like to say that a lot. Where is it? If it's not here, it's gotta be there. All righty then. I'm gonna Same thing we're doing on the other side. I'm checking from the bottom of the retainer to the top of the guide. And if you have some shims, then you must have to set that up. I'm trying to get it where y'all can see and I can see as well. So we can both see what we're doing. I'm doing really good right here. I hope y'all are doing good here. Because I may have to just take this and run with it. Something like that. All right, what are we at? 1.9915. We're um, 8,000 from where we wanna be. They don't make a shim that much. If I put a 15, I would actually have um, way more. I'm on 1.199. I think I'm actually so close to two inch. That's it. Once this dude sets in there a few times, I bet we're going to be right at the two inch that we want. I'm going to like that. Look at that. Look at that. Okay. What do we have there? It's two inch. I don't know if you can see that. Uh, oh, sorry. So we're at two inch. We are at two inch. Um, Beautiful, you're so beautiful to me. Mm -hmm. I right, get my big hands out of there. All right, this one is set, set it. All right, this one is set, set it and forget it. That's all gonna stay like that now. Those are my shims. Those are retainer. I'm even using the retainer that I'm actually using. Oh, there we go. So there it is. I've taken my keepers and spring off and there's my whole setup. Valve, guide, um, there's my shims and there's my retainer. That all stays together right there. And let's go ahead and get the next one.
I like that. Look at that. I like that. Come in here. Wow. All right. Mr. Henry Ford did all right there. Henry Ford. Mr. Henry Ford, what do we got here? Mr. Henry Ford, touching that right there. I don't know if y'all can see that. 1.99999, it's two inch. It's two inch, can y'all see that? 1.999, it's like, there's no more nines, no more left in there, and there's a two inch right there. So it was 1.999989. It is, my friends, it's two inch. Um, I don't want to say trust me because I just showed you with the with the caliper. It actually is two inch. Am I just too close? Um, for comfort. Once again, tool in here. I'm gonna flip it this way to pull. Put it in the guide. I'm gonna pull down. I'm gonna pull my clip out of there. Okay. Then I'm gonna go ahead and use this tool this way on the guide i'm gonna put it right here and i'm gonna pull it out what do we got look at there go and take the two keepers off test spring off this will stay as a package and it's going to stay there and we're going to keep on repeating, 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 repeating. This keeper goes on there. Mm -hmm. Pull. Pull it up. Some are a little bit snugger than others. Watch your ears, everybody. Once again, cut for the port. Valve. Look at that beauty. And that beauty, we're going to start off with our two shimmy shim shims. Test spring. Let's put the retainer we're going to use on keepers. Keepers. I'm checking everyone. I know. I encourage you to do the same. What else are you doing today? Oh, look at that. I can already tell that's two inch because this was two inch on the last one. And then sure enough, it's two inch. Look, we're right right at the two inches. Like one nine 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 nine. It's two inch. All right. Even though everything is working properly, I'm not going to take a chance and just say, you know what? Put two shims on all of them and let's rock and roll, Danny. And this isn't a career, this is an engine. And let's get it out of here. Um, I have a problem not ever being able to just get stuff out the door because I want to check every single part. So far, they're all perfect. This one here, I'm going to recheck. I may change a guide. Um, well, one of the guides may be machined wrong. There's something here. This one needs 15 thousandths um, more than the rest of them. All of them are dead perfect. I'm, I wasn't gonna say dead nuts, but no one likes dead nuts. So they're perfect. And we're gonna work our way this way. I tagged here that that one needs a 15 shim, but it's got me to wondering why does it need a 15 shim? What's going on? So I may just take another guide out of a box and go ahead and try it in that one and see if it's an, an issue. There's the one that goes in this hole right here along with this clip there's no variance in clips but i'm just kind of anal that way um mm. watch your ears if you notice this guide i didn't have to cut anything on on the bottom of the guide it's already flush with the port just the way it is um that's why i say you're pretty much going to have to, try, you know, do everyone individually. Back then, the machining procedures, there wasn't CNC. 
CNC was probably Charlie and Chuck, and they were working next to each other. And that was CNC back then. And now we don't have CNC, or now we do have CNC, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Come on, Charlie and Chuck. Mm -hmm. All right. How's everybody doing today? I'm glad to finally be back on this project. Oh, my fingers. Ah, ah, hear that? Ah, ah, what happened? Anybody, anybody, anybody? I'd love for somebody to have the answer right now, what happened here? Anybody have that answer for me? Um, put it in the comments below. Um, what happened? What happened? What happened to that? Anybody? 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 Hmm? 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 Anybody? Please? Please? Somebody? All right, I heard somebody say it. Why don't you go ahead and add the shims, Danny? Whew. I could have had you here helping me a little earlier, and I wouldn't have had to go through the steps of it. there it wasn't seated quite in there's actual what I just pulled out of there and let's see I want to make sure y'all can see this y'all thinking well you know, what am I doing all right I'm going in just to the touches right there just touched and what do we have two inch all right mm -hmm. all right Well, of course, we have two inch. We have one point. I don't know if y'all can see that. <clears throat> one point. <clears throat> what is that? 1.999. Hey, look, it's going back and forth for 1.99999 and two inch. It's two inch in every day of anybody's world. Um, I will take that as a two inch. Once again, let's go and pull the keepers off, pull the test spring off, put the retainer, and I'm even going to put that clip all as my setup right there for that one, for that one setup there. 
All right, I hope this wasn't too long, too, too informative. There's such a thing. Um, leave me a comment. I'm going to start seeing, yeah, Danny, you're too informative. You just talk too much. Yep, I, I do. Uh, so far, the comments that I do receive is that um, y'all like this. Y'all want to get a little more in-depth than the average, just give me a, you know, uh, an insight of what you're doing. You all right, y'all are actually um, uh, more in depth than, than the average uh, crowd, I guess, uh, which are which I really like. I'd rather have, you know, you know, I've always said I'd rather talk to th three people that want to uh, listen and want to absorb what I'm saying than a hundred people who just want to see a pretty face. All right, don't don't go there. Um, but now, like child mom says she likes my pretty face. So that being said. Um, Hope you enjoyed this. Tell your buds, tell your friends, tell your chickens, tell your piggies. As for me, I'm going to get on out of here because we got to go home and edit some videos so that I can have you a video for Tuesday. We'll see you then. Okay.